What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today I'm going to be reviewing a two round Walter football mock draft for this upcoming year. I promise y'all videos every single day. It's been a little bit of a pain to make sure that we have actually quality as well as quantity, but I'm lining up some really cool guests to come on for our deep dive series. So if you guys are fans of specific teams, which I know pretty much all of you are, stay tuned for that because I'm trying trying so hard to get somebody for every single team. It's going to be crazy. So stick around for that. Let's get right into this because there are 64 picks that we're going to be going over. Start off with the number one uh, pick Arizona Cardinals going Caleb Williams. To me, if this is the situation, I let Kyler walk or trade him. I would deal with the dead cap. I don't care. Find a way to make Caleb Williams work. I think that he is truly that special. Next, we have Tampa Bay going Drake May. Um, I think realistically, they will go one and two based on how much teams like these quarterbacks, uh, according to Brett Coleman, who is just on the show. So again, feel free to check that one out. It is going to be awesome if you guys do get to see that, because I think that content is the best that I've ever created for the channel. And, um, you know, I think that you guys should definitely not miss out on it. Chicago Bears and going Jared Verse. You know, I think if Chicago's sitting there at three, you don't go after an edge rusher. I say, even though it's a need, um, you guys end up, I'm trying to make sure that, yeah, they, the Panthers sent them their pick. They still have, they have two first round picks. If Chicago Bears are sitting there at three and uh, no quarterbacks are available, because unfortunately, Justin got to put up some form of wins, right? Uh, I would go after Marvin Harrison Jr. So that would be where I'd go with that pick. Personally, number four Cardinals then going, after the GOAT himself, Marvin Harrison Jr. Even though I love Jared Verse, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. just is in another league. Indianapolis Colts then going Brock Bowers out of Georgia. Uh, they have a ton of tight ends. I don't think that's going to be a primary need for them. I would be going to address the O-line, and uh, it's a good spot to start doing that. Speaking of addressing the O-line, Patriots going Olu Fashanyu. I think that is a perfectly fine pick. They are going to probably need both a left and right tackle after this year, so... Uh, it's a good investment for them, for sure. He's a young kid with a ton of traits, and honestly, he's somebody that probably should have come out this past year, but you know, maybe he's just not ready to go into the NFL, and uh, he's not going to be sacrificing much, knock on wood, from an injury or something if he ends up coming out this year. Pick number seven, the Packers go Rook Arojo. So I like Rook. I think he's a phenomenal player. Now, is it surprising to see him up this high? Absolutely. Do I think he'll get this high? Absolutely not. I think he's more of a defensive interior guy, and uh, he pairs up with Tyler Davis really well. I don't think he's going to be playing edge reps. I'm not 100% sure, but I love his athleticism. I love his tenacity, and he does produce very, very well. The Clemson defensive interior uh, with Rook as well as Tyler coming back is, um, they were two of my guys last year coming into the Senior Bowl. And uh, we got to see him return. So they're going to be at the top this year as well. Uh, Titans going JC Latham, big fan of him. I don't think he's going to be a guard, extremely athletic. Uh, and he shows a lot of tools. I think he's going to be a top tier offensive lineman. He is a right tackle as well, which uh, we have not seen too many of those come out in the past years. But, you know, it's definitely somebody worth spending some uh, good draft capital on. Then Bears, number two overall pick. They're going both D-line, and they are going to be going Michael Hall Jr. here. I think Michael Hall, I think the defense attack class is stacked to the point where you don't need to invest super early. Another reason why I disagree with Rook. But, you know, I don't disagree with the Bears going defensive line. They did just grab essentially, I believe, three defensive interiors in this past draft, two of them within the first three rounds or the first 64 picks. So um, I think that's... a bit of a stretch you know if the bears are really sitting there at pick number i believe three or pick nine because it doesn't say which one's which you know you gotta invest on the offense too i know the defense is you know the defensive line's an area of improvement but i think the secondary is fine i think that the defensive interior has enough dudes on it i think their linebacking core has a ton of money invested into it so i really believe that more of the needle mover would be on the offensive side, which they did not address at all. Same thing going Dallas Turner. So you're getting another edge rusher there with Foskey. It, I mean, to be fair, Cam Jordan is going to be getting up there in age. So you never know if he's going to be at the peak of his ability. Um, it sucks they didn't get Miles Murphy last year, but you know, it is what it is. I think that Miles Murphy or Brian Breezy would have been a good selection there. And 
they took one of the two, which is not usually in Saints fashion to take um, to take the right player. But glad y'all did. Next, we have the wow. Um, apparently, the Washington Redskins are making a comeback, but uh, Washington Commanders going Joe Ald. Come on, come on, Walter Football. Got to update that, buddy. Uh, not, I mean, I'm personally not somebody who is um, extremely anal about when people don't do that, but it is out of respect for the organization because this one doesn't exist anymore. But the Washington Commanders going Joe Alt would be a great move. They're just continuing to invest in O-line. Never going to disagree with that. Um, the Los Angeles Rams, really? What's up with y'all not being able to update logos and stuff? This is a pretty easy PNG upload. But anywho, uh, Rams going Kamari Lasseter. I think a cornerback is a very good idea. I thought Lasseter had a lot of slip-ups last year, similar to Kalen King. I'm not really a huge fan of the cornerback class this year myself. I think there's one good corner, pretty much, and that's going to be uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry. Then you got the Raiders going Quinn Ewers uh, with Jimmy G potentially not even playing if he doesn't uh, come back from his physical properly. I think they could be even higher than this, and I do believe that a quarterback is not an awful selection. Pick number 14, Texans going Xavier Worthy. Um, I think that's... As much as I want to say yes to it, because I love Xavier Worthy's talent, you really have Tank Dell, who is almost identical as a prospect. Um, maybe with Xavier's a bit faster, but you know I just don't really think you're adding much to the receiving core. I really don't. So uh, I would rather go after someone like A.D. Mitchell, who has that receiver one build. And uh, obviously there's a Mecca Buka in there as well. But just talking about Texas wide receivers, A.D. Mitchell would be great. Uh, speaking of getting a number one quality wide receiver, Giants going Johnny Wilson. He's really slow. He's probably going to run the four sixes. He's pretty much a tight end playing wide receiver. But, you know, it's fun to see that a big wide receiver goes here. Again, I'd be opting for A.D. Mitchell. Um, it was a pick change previously, J.T. Tumalau. I think that was a good idea to change that pick. The Baltimore Ravens then going Mason Smith, defensive interior. Don't disagree with that. I believe Kilias Campbell. Yep, there we go. <laughs> There we go. Clay's Campbell left. I was surprised they did not end up replacing him with Miles Murphy, but you know, they decided to go offense. Uh, Mason Smith though, plays edge at 300 pounds, kind of ridiculous. And I would not want to see that uh, for going up against my Steelers twice a year, at least Chargers then going JT to Malau. I think that is perfectly fine. Uh, Khalil Mack, I believe almost was cut this past year to save money. So I think it's an excellent idea to bring in a high upside player with just unbelievable potential with lower consistency because you have a really good supporting cast in there to help him get there. Next, we got the Broncos going Jack Nelson tackle slash guard out of Wisco. I uh, heard some good things about him. Haven't studied him myself yet. And offensive line is in the works, but I do like Wisconsin linemen. Just nothing else is really working from there at the moment. Braylon Trice. Mm, I like some, I like Braylon Trice a lot. Uh, he's somebody who's not getting enough respect. And I'm excited to see that he is listed in this range here. You know, just he's someone who's a pressure machine. Granted, he doesn't go up against the best offensive lineman, but I think he's a very, very good player. Excited to see him there in Atlanta. Then we got Seattle then going Jack Sawyer. I don't think he's really earned the respect of being this high. I've heard some people who do believe that he is that good of a pass rusher, but um, it's been a minute since we've seen a very respectable Ohio State edge rusher to the point where, you know, they belong. They have a couple of them that do belong up this high. You know, I just I don't know. I'm not super hyped up about it, even though I'm an Ohio State fan. Vikings going Kool-Aid McKinstry. That would be a ridiculous snag. So uh, if they could do that, good for them. Jaguars going to Vondre Sweat. Interesting to go after a nose tackle. I don't think that nose tackles are nearly that valuable. I would rather go after another defensive interior like Leonard Taylor, who is going to be a pass rushing pressure machine that I have. It, I had him listed multiple times in my watch list. So um, I think that he'd be a better fit to keep him in Florida. Steelers didn't going Chico Bennett edge out of Virginia. I'm going to be completely honest. I have not seen Chico Bennett, but we are working a deal with Alex Highsmith. I highly doubt that edge rusher is going to be a position of um, concern right there. Then we got Donovan Jackson boosting the line for Miami. When Tua's health is, you know, the biggest question mark, I think that's more than fine to invest heavily into that O-line. Cowboys going JV on Cohen, formerly out of uh, Bama, now out of Miami. Uh, oh, says it right there, Lamau. Uh, but JV on Cohen, 
He's a he's a solid player. I just don't really think he's anything special. We'll see what happens there. Niners in going Terry and Arnold. Uh, again, it's a I like to wait for all twenty two before I start judging defensive backs. But uh, someone who I have not seen, so I don't think defensive back is a bad idea for the Niners. I think it's a very solid idea. And I'm never going to go against a team investing in a high upside defensive back until I don't believe they have that high upside. Then you have the Jets going to Tavian Sanders. I think he should be tight end too in this class. He's a very fun player to watch. I think he has some drop issues, but you know, very good player. He has been one of those guys who was able to bench essentially um, Jalil Billingsley, who was, I believe, a national champion. So Definitely a fun guy to watch there. Chiefs then going Leonard Taylor. Spoke of him earlier. I think that'd be an excellent pick. Uh, Max Melton out of Rutgers. I think he's Bo Melton's brother. You know, he. I've heard some very good things about him as well. So excited to see him there. Now we have the Bills going Mecca Agbuka. Uh, he should not be this far down. But if he is, the Bills are just getting another snagging, another amazing player. So the Bills receiving core with that and Dalton Kincaid would be insane eagles going malachi more doubt that he is more of that free safety if you want to stick him at a safety spot but he's probably going to be more of a slot corner when all is said and done uh then you got the Bengals going zion nelson he's played both sides but he's he doesn't deserve it he doesn't but um looking at other right tackles of marius mims would be excellent for that spot then we have number 33. We're going to go through round two. Travion Henderson for the Cardinals. A running back is never a bad thing for a team that is looking for just that day one consistency. You already address a quarterback and a wide receiver. So getting a solid running back wouldn't be a horrible, horrible idea. I think it's a little bit early for Trey Henderson based on, you know, I think there are some very, very talented backs in this class. And I don't think that he's the best one. 34, the Buccaneers going Walter Parks. You know, I think there's just better tackles in this class, but we'll see. We'll see. Obviously, I love seeing these players take steps up and be able to rise to the occasion. Uh, Panthers and going Eric Gilbert. I think it'd be really interesting because if I'm not mistaken, Nebraska is where uh, the former head coach of Carolina went, I believe. So it'd be really intriguing to see that um, we're going to see the lineage now go into the NFL rather than, you know, leave the NFL. Houston Texans then going Cedric Gray. Uh, lots of love going around for Cedric Gray. He is a very talented linebacker. Would love to see him there. Helping on the Texans' second level. Uh, Colts then going KT Leveston. Or Leveston. Mm, eh. Kansas State had one good offensive lineman last year, and that was Cooper Beebe, and he wasn't even that spectacular. Patriots going Spencer Rattler is a joke. Um, I understand, like, if you look at it logically, apart from his personality, it's an amazing pick. He has all the talent in the world, but and he also has a lot more upside than the quarterbacks you do have. But when you do analyze what Spencer Rattler is, he has absolutely no traits that a team would actually want in a leader of the locker room. He's just a complete asshole. Um, and I hate to be completely blunt and rude with my language, but, you know, he's somebody who he's on tape looking like a total jerk. His best friend just left him in South Carolina. You know, Austin Stogner decided to say, I'm gone. And that's his best friend. And um, I've had personal friends who know both Austin Stogner and Spencer Rattler. Everybody says the same thing. He's a dick. So uh, naturally, I don't think any team's going to want to fall in love with somebody who is so full of themselves that they don't care about the team around them. Hate to be the Mr. Party Pooper here, but it's the simple facts. He's just not a guy that an NFL team would want in a locker room. I think that he will be UDFA, and I highly doubt that he ever makes a roster, even though the talent itself is worth it. Um, You know, Antonio Brown's not on a roster in the NFL because it's not his actual talent. It's his personality. And I'm not comparing the two, but I'm saying those with personality issues are um, ones that teams don't want, regardless of talent level. Now we have the Green Bay Packers going Graham Barton. Uh, that is sex in a pick. I think if they flipped both Graham Barton and Ruka Rorho, I think I'd like the picks even more, but I'm not going to complain. Ja'Cory Brooks is a solid wide receiver. I still think Tennessee can continue boosting their core, so I don't think that's a bad pick at all. Bears and going Donovan Edwards. I think Blake Harms is a better back out of Michigan, so I'm a little bit intrigued to see why. Um, why Edwards is there. Now we have the Eagles going Bo Collins. I didn't really see anything that screened day two out of that Clemson receiving core. And so I'm a little bit concerned about that. But, you know, wide receiver four is something that we'll be looking for. Don't know if you should be looking for that in round two, though. 
Redskins, not the Redskins, the Commanders are going Eric All. Um, I thought he was out of Iowa for some reason. I don't know why. I might be tripping. But I I have no idea. Do they really not know that it's the Commanders? It's just weird because this has been out for a couple of days. Um, the editor not doing too good of a job here. But regardless, I think a tight end is a good thing to go with for the Commanders. I think that if they go quarterback here, would not blame them either, even though I have faith. In um in Sam Howell. Then we have the Rams, Jack Kaiser. Mm, I think that linebacker is a great idea for the Rams. I just highly doubt that these are the ones who would be going. Raiders going Blake Corum. I used to do that myself last year in the mocks. So I think that's a great move because I don't know if Josh Jacobs is going to be there after this year since he was franchised. I think he becomes an unrestricted free agent. Uh, now we have Tyler Davis, who is an amazing pick for the Browns. I think Tyler Davis is a stud, and he'll be a five-star starter. Zach Frazier out of West Virginia. I think there's better defense, oh, interior offensive linemen here for the Giants, but I'm not going to shame him for boosting the O-line. Jamal Banks out of Wake Forest. going to be honest, he's not the receiver who popped off for me out of Wake Forest. So getting another one, not exactly going to be my prerogative. Uh, Cole Bishop, he's a solid player. I think he's uh, he's in my top 100, but uh, I'll scroll down so you guys can see a little bit more on my board as well. Uh, I just don't really have full faith that he's going to step into the role properly. Then we have the Saints going Storm Duck. I thought he went... I Am I tripping? I thought he transferred to Penn State. Uh, apparently Louisville. Of course, we can't trust this site. They have the Washington Redskins still as uh, the name there, but... You know, Saints going Storm Duck. I don't think going DB is ever a bad thing. Uh, Tate Rutledge uh, or Rutledge out of Georgia. Haven't seen enough of him, and if I'm going to be completely honest, to uh, be able to justify giving good analysis on him. CLC is going KJ Jefferson. Makes no sense when you have Joe Milton on the board. Uh, Jaden Daniels. A lot of people were pissed off that he wasn't in my top 15 quarterbacks video. He probably will be at the end. I just need to continue watching more tape on these guys and. You know, I need to continue regrading them because a lot of guys who were legacy grades were graded based on a scale that is slightly different to what I have now. So Jaden might be making an appearance come the season. But a very fun player just did not get the exit from Arizona State that you'd probably want because everybody kept saying he was complete cheeks. But a uh, kid has talent, just needs to be a bit more consistent. Uh, Lathan Ransom, I think he's the best DB at Ohio State. So we'll see. Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and going Danny Stutzman out of Oklahoma. I love Oklahoma linebackers, but I highly doubt that uh, the Steelers are going to draft one in round two. Now we have the Dolphins going ZTF. You know, ZTF, he's just been dealing with a lot of injuries, but uh, the talent is certainly unquestioned. Jermaine Burton to the Cowboys would be ridiculous. I think that would be amazing to see him there. Um, I think that, yeah, no, I would love to see Jermaine Burton. For the Dallas Cowboys, Tony Grimes transfer, uh, formerly a teammate of Storm Duck that we just talked about going to Texas A&M. You know, we already talked about this before many times. Tony Grimes is a solid corner. He was somebody who I had as a day two guy, and um, he ended up transferring to Tamu. So good for him. They know how to they know how to keep some good quality DBs there, and they have a lot of five stars on roster. So for him to start is a big plus. Jonah Monheim, I don't think he's going to be a right tackle. He's sub 300 pounds and uh, he plays like it. His anchor's absolute garbage, but his overall grade is very good. So if you want to keep him on the move or something, sure. But I think he's going to be a guard in the NFL. I highly doubt that he'll end up being an offensive tackle. Uh, Xavier Truss, I don't understand what's the um, the allergy to Amarius Mims because you're having guards and tackles out of Georgia, except the one that's actually good and including um, the center, Cedric Van Pran. A little bit weird. A little bit weird. I don't get that, personally. Then you got Bo Limmer. Heard some good things about him. He's honestly what I'm going to be watching today later. So excited to give you guys some better analysis on that. But Arkansas offensive lineman going back to a place where, you know, then you guys have a pretty damn solid Arkansas offensive lineman there. Bill is going Cooper Beebe. Never going to complain about guard help. But they did get Osiris Torrance, if I'm not mistaken. And and uh, if I'm going to be honest, don't really know if you really need to get that guard spot. Kendall Milton. Uh, oh, my God. No, don't end off like this. Kendall Milton's complete cheeks. I'm sorry. No disrespect to Kendall Milton on a personal level, but on a professional. Uh, he is probably one of my least favorite running backs to watch. Just um, no. 
Although I do think the Eagles could look for a longer term answer at running back. Miles Jones out of Texas A&M. Don't know enough about him, but DB, never a bad thing for the Bengals. So let me know what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys on the far side. Peace.